of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So they're glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Me, <laughs> here and I'm sure explain to you more about my antique business here in Chicago. For well, that's easy. In this country, if people want to pay money for you all the things, then it's called antiques. If they don't want to pay money, then it's called junk. <laughs> so far, I'm in the junk business. <laughs> my countryman, Pasquale, who's brought me to America and has set me up in my business, he don't like antiques. The only thing he likes that's old is all the cash. <laughs> but to me, mamma me, I'm a love of my old shop. When I'm coming back from some auction with a spinning wheel or a feather that was used to write the word in the 1790, I feel like, like I'm on a part of America. But Pasquale, he don't understand this. He says, if I want to own a part of America, I should marry his daughter, Ross. <laughs> But to Mamma Mia, she's away 250 pounds, and, and that's uh, too much real estate for one man. <laughs> Mamma Mia, how, how I can explain it to Pasquale the beauty which I'm seeing in my antiques? Like taking this old roll top desk which I bought a few days ago from a junkyard. Junk man, I don't know what it is. He's selling me this desk for eight dollars, but I'm sure it's an antique from a Civil War days. He's got a lot of scratches and a dents and a bumps. <laughs> I guess the owner must have been on the losing side. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sitting here in my antique shop and I'm thinking of how lucky I am to be in this business when suddenly my door is open up and a big wind is coming aside. Luigi, my friend. <laughs> Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hello. Well, little man, what's new? In a disantique shop, nothing. <laughs> 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 well, Luigi, we had our little laugh, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. Now I got a news for you. In a few days, I'm a tearing down your antique shop. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Now listen to me with both your eyes. <laughs> I'm a sick and a tired of seeing you waste your time in this uh, this old age home of a tired of furniture. Pasquale, what are you gonna do? I'm a no more gonna be like a chicken-hearted, almost a father-in-law to you. From now on, I'm gonna be mean, a hard, a cruel, a vicious. I'm gonna act like a landlord. <laughs> Luigi. Yes, sir, Pasquale. Next week, instead of Luigi Bosco's antique shop, is going to be a big new sign outside. Pasquale's a supermarket. Oh, no, no, Pasquale, you can't do this. All right, maybe you're going to make more money with a supermarket. But how are you going to compare this to antiques? It's a business of love. Pasquale, money is not everything. Please, I'm no one to talk about a money to a man who's never had it. <laughs> Luigi, if I'm a told you once, I'm a told you twice. Your best friend is the dollar bill. Oh, no, that's where you're wrong, Pasquale. You can have a better friends than the dollar bill. That's right, the five dollar bill. <laughs> Luigi, it's no use to argue with me. I say supermarket is a supermarket. When my head is settled on something, is like a solid block. You're so right, Pasquale. You're real solid block ahead. <laughs> that's 
a funny thing. And when I'm saying it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> <laughs> Look, am I fine a business man? And next week, is it going to be a supermarket here? Now, I'm going to need a strong fella to lift things around the shop. So if you want to apply for a job as a shoplifter, let me know. <laughs> Well, I don't say I'm not the good business man. And look, I'm going to bought this all a desk here for $8. If it's a turn out to be an antique, I'm going to make a lot of money on it. Ah, it's a piece of junk. I want to kick it to fall to pieces. Now look. Hey, hey Mama Mia. Look, the top is all down. Hey, yeah, look, I'll give another kick. Hey, Pasquale, stop. Hey, look. Look, envelope is a fall out of that desk. What do you expect? Is it going to fall out? The Paul who reveres a horse? <laughs> hey, let me see that letter. All right. Uh, 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 sign A. Lincoln. Huh? That's a nothing. I throw it away. Lincoln? No, Pascal, are you fooling? Couldn't it be signed by Abraham Lincoln? You know what that would be worth? It? Lincoln is a gone a long time ago, so this is what the post office calls a dead letter. Ain't it worth a cent? <laughs> Let me see. White House, 1854, A. Lincoln. Pasquale. A letter from Abraham Lincoln right in this desk. You know what this means? Sure, Lincoln was a too lazy to run down to the mailbox. <laughs> Luigi, enough of foolishness. In my supermarket Just is a good... Just to think. Me. Luigi Bosco, plain immigrant, and I'm got a letter that was written by Abraham Lincoln and it was signed by Lincoln and myself. So what? The letter from Hedy Lamar is worth it twice as much. <laughs> Why, is, is it too good to be true? Hey, Luigi, come back. Where are you going? No, I'm going to my night school class and my teacher, Miss Spalling, and she's going to tell me if it's a real letter or not. Oh, goodbye, Pasquale. Goodbye. Luigi! Ah, oh, little papa squeak. <laughs> if he was to look on my daughter Rosa like he looked on that Lincoln letter, she would have gained 20 pounds. <laughs> All right, All right, class, quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Mr. Basco? Well, that's his first absence this year. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Mr. Olson? Hey. Mr. Schultz? You got to ask? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow poopers. <laughs> oh, I am more fun than a little poopy dog. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz. And try to pronounce that word pupils. Oh, certainly. <laughs> thank you, fellow pupils. <laughs> Good. Oh, I am more fun than a little pupy dog. <laughs> I'm a spoiling. I'm a spoiling. I'm a present. The donor mark me absent. Why are you late, Mr. Bass? On account, I'm got a letter from Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> what? Luigi, shake hands with me. I just got a telegram from Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, that's a very silly excuse. But I'm spoiling, is it true? Here, here's the letter. You see for yourself. Oh, my goodness. Apparently, this letter was written by Lincoln. Luigi, where did you get it? Oh, if that's a yen, you find Lincoln letter. They, they must be worth a lot of money. Money? That's worth a fortune. A fortune, sure, sir? Why, sure, that's priceless. Lincoln represents the kind of man we may never see again. What's that, Schultz? A Republican president. <laughs> no smile, Luigi. I'm trying to make you laugh. Mr. Schultz, stop confusing Mr. Basco. Now, where did you get this Lincoln letter, Mr. Basco? Well, uh, in my antique shop, Miss Spaulding. You see, I was aboard an old Civil War desk. Pasquale was a make of fun. He's a kick at the desk and the top is a fall down. He's a kick him again and this Lincoln and the is a fall out. Himmel, one more kick and he starts the Civil War over again. <laughs> Luigi, you, you should have that letter appraised by an expert. It might be very valuable. Ach, sure. My, my uncle Hugo once had a girlfriend. She got $500 for one old letter she found. Who has a link in a letter? No, it was Uncle Hugo's letter. He sent it to her in a moment of weakness. <laughs> Seriously, Mr. Basco, this letter should be worth something. That is, if it's a real Lincoln letter. If, if it's a real... Oh, no. Miss Pauling, how are you going to tell if it's a real link in a letter? How can you tell the same way you tell with a Lincoln penny? You bite it. <laughs> if it bites back, it must be Lincoln. 
Mr. Schultz, you are only confusing Mr. Basco. I'm sorry, Luigi. I didn't mean to get you fashimmeled. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Spaulding, how could Luigi make sure that Lincoln letter is genuine? Well, I'm not really qualified to judge, Mr. Basco, but I could send you to an expert on this subject. His name is Maxwell Hunley. He's an authority on Lincoln, and he's a dealer in rare books. All right, Miss Spaulding. I'm going to see him right away. What's the matter, Luigi? You suddenly got pale. Oh, don't you feel good? Well, it's, uh, it's just, well, Abraham Lincoln is the biggest American I'm read about all of my life when I was in Italy. Always America was, to me, great the place. A place where Lincoln lived. And since I'm on this letter, well, I, I feel like I'm touching the hand of this great man. And now, now if this letter ain't the real... Well, well now, really? don't feel so bad, Luigi. You, you go down to this expert fellow, Mr. Hunley, and, and the chances are you have a real Lincoln letter. That's right, Luigi. Lincoln wasn't the type to send fake letters. <laughs> That's true, Luigi. I bet you're even going to get your name in the papers for this. Yes, you'll be famous, Mr. Basco. Yeah. Who knows? They might even put your name in the history book. Yes. Oh, stop, <laughs> stop, 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 sure. No, sure. 1492, Columbus discovered America. 1950, Luigi discovered Lincoln. we return to Life with Luigi, I'd just like to mention the enjoyment you can get by chewing delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum. Slip a stick of Wrigley Spearmint into your mouth anytime. You'll find the lively, full-bodied, real mint flavor really refreshing. And you'll enjoy the smooth, pleasant chewing. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma me, I'm going to downtown now to see this expert, Mr. Hunley. And he's going to tell me if this Lincoln letter I'm found in the old desk is real. Mamma me, it's a look real to me, but, but now I'm a little worried. I was a notice on the bottom of the letter is not the sign to Abraham, just the A. Well, well, it could be that Lincoln was running short of ink. <laughs> But just imagine, Mamma Mia, it was a real letter. What a proud day this is for me. Like a Schultz is a say, 14 and 92, Columbus is a discovery. Well, a little banana nose. How's it a bigger business, man? Hello, Pasquale. Hey, how come you ain't starting to move this antique junk out of here? Carpenters are coming tomorrow to metal the shelves for the supermarket. No, Pasquale, please, I'm too busy. I'm going to go downtown and see a man about this Lincoln letter. He's going to examine it and tell me if Lincoln really wrote it. He can tell this when he examines the letter? Sure. Luigi, stop wasting the time. You want this letter to have the best examination possible, eh? Huh? Yeah. Send it to the Mayo Clinic. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, Pasquale, you're just uh, making a fun of me. That's all you deserve, you stupid boob. You really believe you're going to come across a real Lincoln letter in a broken-down antique shop in Chicago? If you want to dig up the things that was belonged to Lincoln, you've got to go where he left them, on the Lincoln Highway. <laughs> All right, Pasquale, you're making me feel better now. But maybe if this expert, Mr. Hanley, he says my Lincoln letter is real, maybe you're going to change your mind about my antique business. Sure, huh? sure. If this letter is real, Luigi, I'm going to forget all about it at the supermarket. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. Come on, Luigi, I'll go with you to this big expert. <laughs> I want to see you face it when he says, Sorry, Mr. Basco, this letter wasn't written by Honest Abe. It was written by Crooked Joe. <laughs> Here's the store, Pasquale. Maxwell Hanley, rare books. Rare books, eh? This fellow and me, we got a lot in common. He likes his books like I like my meat, too rare. <laughs> now, now, Pasquale, please, don't make it funny. Come on, come on, we're going inside. Ah, oh, good evening, gentlemen. Oh, good evening. 
Are you Mr. Hanley? Yes. Is there something I can do for you? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm a Pasquale from a Pasquale's a Spaghetti Palace. Uh, this fellow here is a Luigi. He's got a letter for Abraham Lincoln. Uh, what time do you expect him to come in? <laughs> what? Sir so, Pasquale, please. Uh, Mr. Hanley, I'm an antique dealer, and I'm happy to find the link in the letter. Here. Please tell me, is it real or not? Oh, I'd be glad to. It's not very often that a Lincoln letter turns up. Mostly fakes, eh? Huh? I'll take a look under my magnifying glass. There. Ah, there's something good. There's the White House emblem. So what? There's a White House of hamburger joints all over the country. <laughs> well, the paper looks right. Just a proper shade of faded brown. Handwriting looks authentic. I can tell by those curlicues. Can't be right. The Lincoln had a straight hair. Pasquale, please. Mr. Hanley, you think this letter is real? Well, we'll soon know. Now, let me see. That's not signed Abraham Lincoln, but simply A. Lincoln. Ah, now I know it's a fake. In those days, they didn't know shorthand. <laughs> no, you're wrong, Mr. Pasquale. It so happens that's a good sign. Good sign? Yes. Most of Lincoln's letters, just like this one, are signed A. Lincoln. Letters with the full name Abraham are quite rare, and consequently, forgeries are practically never attempted. Mr. Basco. Yes, You're a very fortunate man. You stumbled across a real, honest-to-goodness Lincoln letter. Mamma mia. So what? How much money is it worth? Well, it's difficult to place a definite valuation on the letter, but very often the figure may run into astronomical proportions. Look, Mr. Talk English, huh? (laughs) My friend Luigi, he don't understand. (laughs) Well, this letter might be worth $500. What happened? My friend Pasquale, he said, just understood. <laughs> hey, Pasquale, is there something wrong? Five hundred dollars. Luigi, how long would it take it to change my spaghetti palace into an antique shop? Oh, would that, <laughs> would that a stale of food that you got to now? Five minutes. La, 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 I'm got a link in a letter. Abraham Lincoln, I'm got his letter. I know just how you feel, Mr. Vasco. I imagine the people at the Newberry Library would feel the same way if they could get that letter. Library? You mean the public library? They want this letter that I'm a got? Yes, they have a very fine collection of Lincolniana, which is on exhibition to the public all the time. I'm sure they'd be willing to pay you a very fine sum for that letter. Oh, then I'm going to go there right now. I'm going to go right to this Newberry Library. Uh, Mr. Vasco, would you mind if I phoned this item into the newspapers? You know, uh, Maxwell Hunley announces that a Lincoln letter was discovered by Mr. Luigi Basco, antique dealer of... Uh, 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 21, not the Hollister Street. How do you spell that? Just to put a two and a one, is it 21? <laughs> no, I'm going to the library. I'm going to the library. Goodbye, Mr. Honey, and thank you. Goodbye, Pasquale. I'm going to see you in the morning. <laughs> Why, he's excited. I don't know why. He's make big deals like this all the time. Really? Sure. That Luigi Basco is the best business man you ever met. <laughs> Here comes Luigi. Put away that pen and that ink and that faded brown paper. Go on. Ah, good morning, Luigi. Good morning, Pasquale. Hey, Luigi, before you tell me how much money you got from the library, I got some very exciting news. Who at the Pasquale? After you left me last night, I went home and began looking around in my spaghetti palace for old the Lincoln letters. Guess what? Who at the? I found a 15. Fifteen the Lincoln letters. Sure, go ahead, Luigi. Here's the one. Read it for yourself. For you, expert. All right, I read. Huh. From Abraham Lincoln to who is it going to concern? <laughs> this is to certify that all the people, they're born equal, they're created equal, and you can fool all the people half of the time. <laughs> Signed A. Lincoln. Huh? Now, Luigi, you know that letter ain't a fake. That's a sign of A. Lincoln. Now, wait, I, wait, I read another letter. Dear General Grant, you're doing a fine job with this war. Keep up with the good work, and I'm going to let you handle all of my wars. <laughs> P.S. Don't use the atom bomb unless you got to. <laughs> Pasquale, that's impossible. In those days, there wasn't no atom bomb. That shows what you know. So happens that's been a top of military secret for a hundred years. <laughs> and if it wasn't for Walter Winchell, they still wouldn't know about it. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, read us some more. From A. Lincoln to G. Washington. 
Pasquale, the whole thing is a crazy. These letters wasn't written by Abraham Lincoln, and they was written by Abraham Pasquale. <laughs> you found out, huh? <laughs> Luigi, you were a real expert. How you did it? Well, Pasquale, it was a lot of things. But one thing I'm sure of. Lincoln has never spelled his name L-I-N-K-E-N. <laughs> and besides, there's a two L's in a Lincoln. That's a right, Luigi. I just remembered. It's a L-L-I-N-K-E-N. <laughs> well, Luigi, I, I guess I was just trying to get rich too fast. After all, you got all that money from the library. I, hey, how much money they gave you? Uh, good evening, sir. Sit down. I have a table. We serve the finest food here. I'm not interested in eating. Who's Luigi Basco? That's uh, that's uh, I'm a uh, uh, I mean uh, that's uh, me. Is uh, is there something wrong? My name is Bosworth. I read in today's paper that you came across an old Lincoln letter. That's right. I'm a found in an old oak desk that I'm a bought from a junk dealer. Well, that desk belonged to me, and that letter is mine. Yours? Yes, and I can prove it. I have the companion letter which Lincoln wrote the very same day. Now, give me back my letter. No, no, please, please, mister, don't get excited. I won't get excited if I get that letter right now. Just a minute, mister. Possession is a nine-tenths of the law. Would it be ten-tenths for the government to take a one-tenth for withholding it? <laughs> Luigi has found that letter rightfully, so it's a belong to him. Besides, that letter is now in the Newberry Library. Luigi was there last night. Oh, sold it. What right had you to sell that letter? That letter belonged to me. I'll sue you for every penny. I'll have you thrown out of business. Oh, oh, please. Why, you, you please. foreigners come here and you think that you can take over the country. What appreciation do you have of a Lincoln letter? Why don't you go back where you came from? I'm a thinking you should read that Lincoln letter yourself. Maybe you have appreciation for your country. Now, please, get out from here. Don't you tell me to get I, out. Uh, no, I beg your pardon. I'm looking for Luigi Basco. His antique shop seems to be closed. I'm, I'm a Luigi Basco. I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Basco. I'm Professor Eisner from the Newberry Library. Oh. Mr. Basco, we're so thrilled over at the library about acquiring that new Lincoln letter that we would like to hold a special ceremony on Lincoln's birthday. And have you make a formal presentation of the letter to us. Just a minute. That letter belongs to me. I can prove it. Because I have the companion letter which Lincoln wrote that same day. This man has no real regard for that letter, and he had no right to sell it to you. Sir, Mr. Basco didn't sell it to the library. He donated it. Donated it? Sure, I'm... I'm a donated it. <laughs> donated it? <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce the antique dealer who is going to read the Lincoln letter which he so generously donated to our library. July 1854. Dear sir, to answer your argument, I would like to say this. If A can approve, however conclusively, that he may enslave B, why may not the B take the same argument and approve equally that the he may enslave A? You mean that you are intellectually the superiors of others and therefore have the right to enslave them? Take care. By this rule, you are to be slave to the first man you meet with a mind superior to your own. But, you say, it is a question of interest. And if you make it to your interest, you have the right to enslave another. Very well. And if he can make it to his interest, he has the right to enslave you. Yours are very sincerely and respectfully... A. Lincoln. Luigi, I'm proud of you. Well, thank you, Pasquale. You know, when you was reading that letter, you almost look like a Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> now, every time I go to look at a $5 bill, I think I'm looking at Luigi Bosco. <laughs> hey, Luigi, come out out in the hall, uh. There's somebody else here who's very proud of you. <laughs> I call her now. 
Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa! <laughs> yes, my little log cabin. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. Rosa, ain't you proud of Luigi? Didn't he sound and look like a Lincoln himself? Rosa, how would you like to kiss a Lincoln? No, Papa, his whiskers will tickle me. Oh, shut up your face. <laughs> hey, Luigi, she's a funny, eh? <laughs> What's the matter, Luigi? Tonight you should be happy. Ah, you're still thinking about what that man said, eh? About the foreigners and not appreciating the Lincoln? Ah, Luigi, don't let that spoil your enjoyment. There's people like that all over. What could you do about it? Oh, Mr. Basco, we've been looking for you. The program is not over yet. Will you please come with me? Well, sure, Professor. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, to close our program, we have a special announcement which we would like Mr. Basco to read. Just uh, read this, Mr. Pasco. All right. The trustees of the Newbury Library have just received a great good fortune. You have just heard a newly discovered Lincoln letter. Now we are proud to announce the acquisition of the companion Lincoln letter written on the same day. It has been donated to us but the donor wishes it to remain anonymous. That's wonderful. However, he has made one request, and we are happy to comply. Hereafter, both the letters will be exhibited side by side, and under each one there will be a card reading donated by Luigi Pasco. Antique dealer. So, Mamma Mia, I'm in a joy, one of the best experiences of my life. Also, my antique shop is not going to be turned into a supermarket. And besides, I made a good business deal yesterday. I sold all the broken down desk to somebody. Pasquale. <laughs> <laughs> the last few days, I'm not spending much time in my antique shop because I'm in the library most of the time. Well, not exactly all day. Library is only open from a nine to six. <laughs> but I'm going to walk up and back in front of those letters with a big smile on my face. And the people, they stop and they look and they smile back on me. I guess this is because I'm wearing a bigger sign that's to say, I'm Luigi Vasco. <laughs> You're loving the son of Luigi Vasco, the little immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. They present this program each week because they feel that millions of Americans like to listen to the adventures of Luigi just as millions enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. And the Wrigley people invite you to listen next week at this same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.